Lads, ladies, and non-binary daisies, in a couple of videos, I'll be at Artemis Fowl. <sighs> so close. <laughs> it's just a lot, and those Artemis Fowl books keep getting longer. Um, so, also, maybe it's just me, but I don't like it when schools force you to read, because then, like, reading is no longer enjoyable, and it becomes, like, this burdensome task that you have to do, which is partly why I think lots of people don't actively enjoy reading, because, like, rather than reading because they want to, they're reading because they have to, and, like, yes, you need to read, because reading is fundamental, and it's, it can be very fun, but you shouldn't be forced to read. Being forced to read sucks. The Magician's Sin by Alexander Thomas came out in 2019. Amazon says it's dark fantasy and horror. I didn't really get the horror aspect, but I got the dark fantasy part. There's a dude named Anson. He hunts demons. Uh, he's going to retire soon. Um, like there's going to be like, he can't die. And then there, like, cause he was a son, he was a, not a son. He was a student of Merlin. And uh, when Merlin died, the council of like wizards or whatever decided to make Anson the immortal one because they wanted him to rule so Anson killed all of the counselors and there's going to be like a magical convergence thing that's going to happen which will allow Anson to die so he plans to retire there was an exorcism that went wrong and um but the exorcisms rarely go right so he ends up at a church with a demon and he has to exorcise the demon so he ex he gets rid of the demon and um the uh the bishop the guy who runs the church he kind of thinks that uh he thinks words he thinks that anson is going to hell because he cavorts with demons and anson's like eh. <laughs> um there's a girl named caroline whose mom is a magician and her dad is like eh caroline has magical ability but her mom like she doesn't really accept it she's a lawyer and her mom gets kidnapped by some people due to an affiliation with some dude called the magician and um she sent she sends carolyn to anson and anson is like um he was the magician but he stopped associating with carolyn's mom and um yeah so uh the lady's name is dixie by the way so not the magician it was called he was called the professor he uh got involved with Dixie. This book is told out of order, but basically I'm gonna try and do this in order. So Anson was like a magician and he came across Dixie's dad. He wanted to do like a magic show to like reveal witches and wizards to the world. Anson thought it was a bad idea. It was because they ended up like doing demon hunting. Dixie was all on board for this. She wanted to do it. She loves magic. She still worked at a magic show by the time this was done. And, um, the two of them like end up getting married and then like things kind of start to fall apart because Anson doesn't really want to do this anymore but Dixie's like no we're like changing the world we have to do this and they just they have a falling out and they separate and it's been like 20 years I think so fast forward to now she's been kidnapped Dixie's been kidnapped Carolyn is sent to get Anson's help and Anson realizes that Carolyn has a bit of magical ability her um Carolyn and her grandfather, no, Dixie and her grandfather never really told her like how to hone her magical ability, but Dixie gave Carolyn like a magical amulet that her grandfather had that um, he channeled his magic through because without something to channel your magic through, you can like burn out. And um, Anson and Carolyn go to save Dixie and... Uh, yeah, uh, they get separated for a little bit, but then they end up back together. The main antagonist is a demon that, uh, is, like, controlling his son. He, like, lives in his son's body, and he, like, wants revenge on Anson and Dixie. And, um, he also wants Anson's body since Anson can't die. And, uh, at this point, I was, like, halfway through the book. I was really hoping it wasn't going to be a love story. What was I thrown for a loop? Um, so... Yeah, uh, I don't think Dix. Yeah, Dixie does not survive. Um, Carolyn's dad is also dead, and it turns out Carolyn's uh, biological father is Anson, and Dixie just didn't tell him. Which, I mean, it's not like Dixie ever got mad at Anson for not knowing. So 
I guess it's fine. If you make the decision to, like, not tell an ex-partner that you have a kid with them, I mean, it's not really fair for the kid, but then you can't complain about how the other parent never does anything because it's not like they knew in the first place. I'm mostly talking about the ones who can get pregnant and then don't tell the one who got them pregnant about the baby. Like, it's not fair to the kid because the kid's probably going to want to know about that later in life, especially if you're um, a single parent. But if they find out that their dad they think is their biological dad isn't their biological dad, they might be pretty pissed off about that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's just me. Um, Anson uh, gives his life for uh, Carolyn, sort of. He's trapped in Tartarus. I don't know if he's going to die, but Carolyn is now a monster hunter, which is cool. Um, I like that book. I didn't particularly care for the flashbacks. I would have rather have had it like slowly drip fed by like similarities Anson noticed between them or something like that. I would have preferred that. Um, the Kindle version has like a couple of errors and it doesn't list the chapters, but that was fine. Um, it was a good book. I like that book. It's also a standalone book. I need more standalone books. <sighs> um. So the next book is called, where's the title? War of Staffs. I didn't care for this book either. Um, there's, an, uh, there's a prophecy and the antagonist tries to kill the kid who's going to do the prophecy, but he ends up killing the wrong kid because they look the same. It's like his cousin and um, Tarquin is his name. And, like, he's going to be an ambassador. He doesn't want to be an ambassador. So he's sent by a wizard named Celadant to go do something um, to, like, bring peace or whatever. Um, I, I didn't care for this one. Me and Prophecies have, like, a weird history, right? Because, like, in Game of Thrones, right, several several prophecies made in game of thrones in the books we're not entirely sure which of them are real but like fucking it's not the main plot the main plot is the game of thrones um and then like harry potter part of the reason that prophecy doesn't bother me is because it feels like as with many things jk rowling kind of just pulled it out of her ass so um and also Harry doesn't know about the prophecy for like 90% of that uh, thing. He doesn't, he also, like, even once he learns about the prophecy, I'm pretty sure, like, in the fifth or sixth book, he still doesn't know why he's connected to Voldemort. So that one doesn't bother me as much. Um, there's also the Goblin Wars. I didn't particularly like the Goblin Wars. It didn't start fast enough. That book really could have used the map. Um, I didn't say much about it. So, um,. I don't feel enticed by this book. Also, speaking of, because I wrote it in my description, I didn't read the whole sentence, so I don't know what it's about. But the book Uprooted that I read, for some reason, I decided that I didn't want to read the other one, like Spinning Silver, but I don't know why. So, ugh, okay. Um, so, I'm just going to quickly talk about Percy Jackson. One of my friends is of the belief that Harry Potter is better, not that Harry Potter is um, inferior to Percy Jackson. I don't know about all of that, but whatever. Um, like, I'm not going to go over the plot because I need to reread Percy Jackson separate from this and see if I like it. So I'm just going to talk about the things that I noticed because I'm pretty, I got like, I got to about chapter six. So here's some of the things that I notice. Like, I gave, I, I, I tried to give the book a fair shake. I'm gonna give it a second shake because my friend really wants me to. Um, she sent me a meme about how like, it's fun to listen to me complain about other people's books, but when it's a book that she likes, <laughs> you know that, um, that meme of the black guy who's like smiling in like the one thing. And like, that's when I'm complaining about other people's books. And then when he's frowning, He's just, that's when I'm complaining about a book that she likes. And, um, so, like, point one. I read fantasy to escape, right? And, like, 
who doesn't want to find out that they're special? Like, that they're meant to, like, save a world or something like that. And because that's, like, the most novel novel to have ever noveled, clearly you're going to succeed. At least I hope you would succeed. Um, and then, like, it's pretty great. The Root, like, takes the moment of... Take the route, for instance, where the moment the fantasy shit begins, he's attacked by a monster. But I still know the plot before page 100. Like, this book, for right now, I don't really know the plot. Like, for Harry Potter, um, it's very clear that something's going on and that Harry is special. But there's, like, a sense of wonder when he goes to Hogwarts. And that's what, that at least for me, that's what pulled me forward before, like, all the shit with Voldemort started. But then, like, with this book... There's no sense of wonder because he just finished getting attacked by a Minotaur and losing his mother and all that shit. Mm. <laughs> like, rather than just changing his life, like, because for Harry, his life doesn't get uprooted until the seventh book. Rather than just changing Percy's life, his whole life gets uprooted and that's not fun. <laughs> um, secondly, when I escape to these books, inherent danger is not my gym jam. Like, crazy shit starts happening immediately to Percy. Like, at least with Harry. Like, yes, when he was a baby, crazy shit happened, but he doesn't really remember that. And then, like, crazy shit in that book doesn't start taking place for a while. And he, like, at least until his first Quidditch game. That's when weird shit starts happening. But, like, other than that, everything is fine. But, like... There's a clear antagonist also in Harry Potter because even though they think he's working through Snape, you always know that the main villain is Voldemort. Like, clearly something with Voldemort is happening. With this, the main antagonist is very unclear to me right now. And I just... Uh, I suppose these are just reasons for why I like Harry Potter more than I like Percy Jackson. I mean, uh, I'm gonna try... And, I promise I will try and get through it again. But I'm just gonna send this video to her and timestamp where I start talking about Percy Jackson. And then, like, third, Harry Potter doesn't really feel grounded in reality a lot of the time. Like, there's a, there, Harry says that, like, when he was being chased by Dudley and his dumbass friends, like, he, he wished he could escape, so a wind current blew him up to the roof of the school. That's just not real. But, like, with this, like, you have to, like, physically go to Camp Half-Blood without, like, magical transport. And there's, like, a specific place where they do it. And, like, I think it's supposed to just look like a barren hill to anybody who's not inside the force field. And, like, uh This book is not quite apples to bananas, Okay. Like with Harry Potter and Percy Jackson. It's more like galas to like Macintoshes, right? Because like they're both apples. Because they're both like that earlier version of YA that didn't revolve around a female protagonist falling in love with some edgy dark boy. Like <sighs> they're that earlier version of YA and they're also fantasy, but Harry Potter has a lot more magic, and this book is based in the mythology a lot, and I like a bit more myth in my mythology. So, like, I don't know. I just, I'm not, not to say that comparing Harry Potter to Percy Jackson is an unfair comparison for either book. It just feels like, like, Galas and Macintoshes are both great, right? But I would never just out and out eat a Macintosh because they're not the sweetest. But like galas are super sweet. And like I would just I would just like bite right into a fucking gala apple. And, he, and this is my personal opinion because we in this house only bake with Macintoshes. Anybody who just out and out eats a Macintosh with that like nothing ass taste. <laughs> that person's a demon. <laughs> so like, um... And part of the thing with this also is that, like, shockingly, <laughs> Percy Jackson, regardless of the fact that I plan to read it again, does go on the would read again list because I like it more that because it doesn't have mythological Nazis. <laughs> Mary Van Amsterdam and the Resistance to the New Dawn has ghost Nazis, and I don't want Nazis. And also, if I never read Fellowship of the Ring, 
ever again, I will be incredibly pleased. <laughs>